pride and anger are a deadly combination. It gets the better of us probably more than what we uh, admit to. But when pride and anger are mixed together, both of them are bad enough as they are. But when you mix them together, you get really devastating results. And, and where this happens in our lives oftentimes is when we are accused and produce a wrong in our life, maybe even a grievous wrong. And, and then from that wrong, because of our anger or because of our pride or because of both, we choose not to repent of it and we make very foolish and life-changing decisions. Well, this is what we're going to look at today as we continue our study in 2 Samuel. This combination of pride and anger prevents the Ammonites from coming back on a, on a terrible decision that they're going to make. And instead, they double down to their own, um, to their own detriment. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. It's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God. We invite you on this journey with us by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. You can receive a devotional much like this one, where we read just a little bit of the scripture together and pull one thing from it to be more like Jesus. Well, like I said, as we look at the Ammonites, we're going to look at uh, King David and, and things that are happening, a situation that happens right now that has taken all the way the wrong way. And instead of, of making things better, the king of the Ammonites, the new king of the Ammonites, only makes things worse. Let's take a look at it together. After this, the king of the Ammonites died, and Hanun, his son, reigned in his place. And David said, I will deal loyally with Hanun, son of Nahash, as his father dealt loyally with me. So David sent by his servants to console him concerning his father. And David's servants came into the land of the Ammonites. But the princes of the Ammonites said to Hanun, Their lord, do you think because David has sent comforters to you that he's honoring your father? Has not David sent his servants to you to search out the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? So Hanun took David's servants and shaved off half the beard of each and cut off their garments in the middle at, the, at their hips and sent them away. And when it was told to David, he sent to meet them, for the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Remain at Jericho until your beards have grown and then return. When the Ammonites saw that they had become a stench to David, the Ammonites sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rehob, and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 foot soldiers, and the king of Maka with 1,000 men, and the men of Tob, 12,000 men. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the hosts of the mighty men. And the Ammonites came out and drew up in battle array at the entrance of the gate. And the Syrians of Zobah and of Rehob and the men of Tob and Maka were, were by themselves in the open country. When Job saw that the battle was set against him, both in the front and in the rear, he chose some of the best men of Israel and arrayed them against the Syrians. The rest of his men he put in charge of Abishai, his brother, and he arrayed them against the Ammonites. And he said, If the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the Ammonites are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be of good courage, and let us be courageous for our people and for the cities of our God, and may the Lord do what, he, what seems good to him. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near to the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. And when the Ammonites saw that the Syrians fled, they likewise fled before Abishai and entered the city. Then Joab returned from fighting against the Ammonites and came to Jerusalem. But when the Syrians saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they gathered themselves together, and Hadadezer uh, sent and brought out the Syrians who were beyond the Euphrates. And they came to Halim uh, with Sobak, the commander of the army of Hadadezer, at their head. And when it was told David, they gathered all Israel together and crossed the Jordan and came to Halim. The Syrians arrayed themselves against David and fought with them, and the Syrians fled before Israel. And David killed of the Syrians the men of 700 chariots and 40,000 horsemen, and wounded Sobak and the commander of their army, so that he died there. 
And when all the kings who were servants of Hadadezer saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel and became subject to them. So the Syrians were afraid to save the Ammonites anymore. Well, this this whole passage of scripture hinges on the very beginning of it. The very beginning, David is wanting to send out a delegation to be nice to the king, to the new king of the Ammonites, because his father was nice to him. And it's treated as an insult. And when uh, when they insult the servants of David, instead of when they hear that they're a stench in David's nose, instead of sending a delegation for peace, instead of saying, you know, this was my bad, I am so sorry. They doubled down by, by getting all the armies and, and getting the Syrian armies to come with them to fight against David. And it causes a great defeat for these people. And then the Syrians, after being defeated once, instead of saying, you know, we're, we're not going to do that uh, again, we're, they double down as well. And they go back and fight against David. And we see this loss upon loss that happens. And the sad part about all of this chapter is none of it had to happen in the first place. Now, God is with David, and David is is being uh, successful in all of his endeavors right now because of what God is doing with them. But I'm talking about the Ammonites right now because the Ammonites were at peace with David. They didn't have to be at war with him. They chose to be at war with him. And anger and pride produce very deadly consequences. We're warned of that by Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 5. So if when we come to the Beat- when we come to the Sermon on the Mount, uh, just past the Beatitudes, he takes some time to go through uh, specific sins and and talks about the deadliness of these sins. And I and I find that these verses in Matthew chapter five hit on the theme of what happened with the Ammonites uh, here in Second Samuel ten. Let's check it out together. Jesus said this: "You've heard that it was said." To those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother. And then come offer and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. Do you see the combination in, the, in this passage of pride and anger? right? Anybody who's angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother, I mean, just back to back, you know, this idea of insult deals with pride, the idea of angry with his brother. This is exactly what happened to the Ammonite king. This new Ammonite king did both of these things. His pride and his anger provided a a terrible um, consequence for his people. All these soldiers who died and, and all needlessly because he had insulted in a grievous way. And so we need to look very carefully concerning the conflicts that we have in our life. Why are they continuing to perpetuate? And as much as it pertains to you and me, it should be because we're trying to keep peace. If they don't want to keep peace, that's a different story. But sometimes you and I, we have to watch out because these twin twin things of, of anger and pride can perpetuate a conflict that God doesn't want us to have with the people that we're working with, with family members, with other things like that. And so we need to, uh, uh, we need to cut this off before we have the deadly consequences of anger and pride. We need to pray before God. We need to leave our gift at the altar. We need to reconcile in as much as it's possible for us so that we can honor and glorify God and not have this this terrible situation against those who might accuse us of wrongdoing because of pride and anger. I hope that helps you today and helps you walk with Jesus, helps it makes you think about maybe the situations you have within your family or at work or other people around you, and uh, that we would deal righteously if we are caught, caught in a conflict with somebody else. God bless you. We'll talk with you again tomorrow.